What's up guys, welcome to another episode with Broke Girls Art School. In today's episode, I'll be going over some epoxy resin techniques and I'll be using alcohol inks. Um, just got some new molds in the mail, so super excited to use these. And I'll be going over all the different supplies that you need and I will also tag those supplies in the description box below. And yeah, so grab yourselves a claw and let's get crafting. Oh, and you, yes you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to support my channel and help me become a successful YouTuber one day. Maybe. Okay, thanks. Bye. All right, so first I'm going to be going over the different supplies that you guys will need. Um, I pretty much bought all of this off of Amazon because I'm too lazy to go to the store. <laughs> but most of these supplies you can find at your local craft store. Um, your options may just be a little bit more limited. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So the first thing that you're gonna need is the epoxy itself. So I actually started buying by the gallon because I go through quite a bit of epoxy between projects like these and I put them on top of some of my wood burns as well. So I save a little bit of money by buying bigger containers like that. Um, but you could find like 16 ounce or eight ounce um, at like Michael's or Hobby Lobby as well. They usually always have epoxy. Um, some brands that I really like are Amazing Clear Cast, and, but every uh, two-part epoxy that I've tried, I've had success with. It's all pretty much the same stuff. Um, yeah, so the next thing that you guys are going to want to grab is a couple of, like, red Solo cups, cups that you don't mind throwing away, um, and then something to mix the epoxy with. I just use these, like, tongue depressors. Um, you're going to need something to pop the bubbles. You could either use, like, a torch or a heat gun. You can also pop bubbles like just by exhaling on the top of it, but I don't like getting my face that close to epoxy because it's not good to breathe that stuff in. Um, you're gonna wanna grab some toothpicks, some gloves. You can just get these, you know, Walmart, Meyer, wherever. Um, this is the alcohol ink that I bought. This, I wanted to get one with like a ton of colors. I did get the pinata brand like last year. I did like that quite a bit. They're a little bit bigger, but it's like simpler colors. This is a lot broader color range, but it's smaller bottles. Um, so I use these. Also, I would recommend buying an extra bottle of white alcohol ink because I go through that the fastest because I when I do my drips which you'll see later I usually alternate between color and white and color and white to really make it stand out and then um, gold also looks really cool so I would recommend getting a gold color um, next you're gonna need your resin molds so these are a couple of the ones that I just ordered and I'm super excited to use this is like a moon phases one this will make like a little tray and then I bought like a crystal set so I'm excited to try these I think these will look super cool um, and then I also got these are like coasters that go with these wine holders super stoked for these so the top of the wine bottle like goes through here and then you put the wine glasses in the sides. So I think these will turn out really cool. Also guys, just so you know, um, I've been using this brand for a long time for like my uh, dog burns and like wood burning projects. And I just tried to use it for those crescent moons. Do not use this stuff if you're using alcohol ink with epoxy resin. It cured way too fast and the ink couldn't like fully go into the resin. So when doing these sorts of projects with alcohol ink, Go with one of these brands, which you can both find at Hobby Lobby. I think at Michael's as well. Um, this one is Environ Text Light. You can see the front. And then this one is Amazing Clear Cast. Um, I would say that the Environ Text is a little bit thicker than the Amazing, but these both I have used and really like. But yeah, I like getting these for other wood burning projects, but do not use this type of resin for alcohol ink. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's everything you guys are gonna need if I miss anything I'm sure I'll go over it later in the video um, So the first step that you're gonna want to take is grabbing your cups and So what I usually do is I'll just take like my what a measuring tool whatever I'm using and a marker and Because it's kind of hard to see when you pour the epoxy like exactly where it's at and it needs to be like perfectly even because if you don't have an even pour with the epoxy then it won't cure fully ever and it kind of will ruin your project so what I'll do is I'll put my 
whatever I'm measuring with inside of the cup and then I'll grab my marker sorry if you can see and then I'll like mark across and then I'll take that same thing put it in the other cup mark across again to make sure that they're super even and then you're gonna want to grab your epoxy so the first thing is you're gonna wanna take your epoxy and pour each part into two separate cups. Again, be super careful and make sure to make them both the exact same um, height because if they are uneven, then your project will not cure fully and it's super annoying. All right, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is grab like a pot or a pan, whatever you have, fill it up about two inches or so with some hot water, not like boiling water, just like hot water from the sink, and then put your two separate parts of epoxy in the hot water. And what this will do is warm up the epoxy so it's a little bit more malleable and you'll have less chance of bubbles because the less bubbles you have, the better your project will look. So we're gonna let this sit for I'd say at least 10 minutes or so, and then we'll start mixing the epoxy together. Guys, and one thing that I would recommend is getting everything set up how you want it before you start mixing your epoxy. Um, the epoxy cures pretty quick. After about like 15 or 20 minutes, it'll start to harden up a little bit. So I recommend having everything set up how you want it beforehand so it's less stressful for you. Another thing I would recommend is putting something down underneath your workstation. I bought like a silicone mat, um, super easy to clean up afterwards. You could also use like parchment paper or a garbage bag, just something to protect your table because anything epoxy gets on, it will ruin. So you want to you know, protect your surroundings. All right guys, so now we're gonna start mixing our epoxy. So you're gonna wanna take both part A and part B and we're gonna pour them into a new cup. Pour nice and slow, again, to avoid those bubbles. You can scrape out the sides, make sure you get as much as you can into the cup. Yeah, you'll notice the epoxy is moving a lot easier now that it's a little bit warm. And I did fill this up kind of high, so hopefully I don't spill. We'll see. Yeah, guys, I definitely recommend wearing some gloves for this. I personally hate when I get epoxy on my hands. All right. Like I said, we're gonna mix this nice and slow for about five minutes or so. And make sure you're mixing in both directions and every like minute or so, make sure that you wipe off the sides of the stick like this and make sure to scrape around the edges of the cup because one of the parts of the epoxy is a bit thicker than the other. So you wanna make sure that it's not collecting on the sides or on whatever you're mixing with. So now I'm gonna pop it in the time-lapse while I mix and then we'll pour. All right guys, so now that our epoxy is nice and evenly mixed, I'm going to start pouring. Um, another thing that you want to make sure of is to fill them up even heights and try not to fill up over the line of the mold. If you do, it's not like a huge deal. You can always sand it down, but it's nice to avoid that step if you can. You guys get the idea. I'm gonna pop this into time lapse again while I fill the rest of these. Okay. 
All right, guys, so now that we have our epoxy all poured, um, after it sits for a couple minutes, the bubble should start to rise to the top, so you're gonna wanna grab your torch or um, heat gun. And then I usually stay around like five or six inches above the surface while I'm popping the bubbles, but I'm constantly moving my hand. I don't recommend holding you know, either your torch or your heat gun in the same spot for too long. It's always super satisfying when you pop all the bubbles. All right, and then if you have some like stubborn ones that are stuck like down in the corners, you can go ahead and grab your toothpick and I kind of like just bring them up to the top Sometimes they'll kind of lodge down there. You're gonna to wanna to try to be pretty quick with this. Don't obsess over it too much. A lot of times if you're doing like alcohol ink, a lot of the, the ink will cover the bubbles anyway. But yeah, the less bubbles the better. Yeah, they usually always hang out in the corners down here. All right guys, so now that I have most of my bubbles popped, I'm gonna start doing my drips with my alcohol ink. So I kind of have a general plan on how I want these moons to look. Um, and I'll do some of this video in real time so you can see the speed that I'm going at. And then I'll probably pop into time lapse a little bit later. Um, but I'm gonna start by going in on the edges of the moons with black. And I always like to layer whatever I'm, whatever color I'm using with white, because I think it really gives the, the pieces a lot more dimension. Which you'll see when it's all dried. Oops, got it in, but <laughs> resin in this one. All right, so now see, I'll grab my white. And then I think I'm gonna do kind of like a purplish, bluish around the edges. And then in the centers, I wanna do some gold. And I have like my gold leaf here that I'll be using. So I'll probably go from like my dark purples into blue. So on these smaller molds, I'll probably just do one drip because I don't wanna have too much going on. And then the bigger ones, I'll do two drips. And it doesn't need to be exact, but I like keeping them pretty symmetrical. And then again, going over with my white. see as those inks start to mix and expand it looks really cool um, so now I'm gonna go with kind of like an indigo blue and I'll be doing the same process so I'm gonna pop this into time-lapse for a little bit and then I'll check back when I start adding the gold leaf in there All right, so now I'm gonna start sprinkling in my gold leaf. And I, I, you can mix in your gold leaf like as you're mixing your epoxy, but I prefer to just kind of sprinkle it in because then I feel like I can put it in you know, more precise spots. Like here, I just wanna put it in the middle of the moons. And then I wanna have the edges of the moons be like, you know, dark and kind of mysterious. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this on top and then I'll be going in with my toothpick and gently kind of pushing them down. All right, 
right, and I'm gonna start dripping in these guys over here. Um, I wanna do some of the crystals with just gold, so I'm gonna drip some gold in here. And I'll be layering the gold with the white quite a bit, and I might throw in some purples. Kind of mess with it as I go. I'll throw some gold in these guys as well. Just so you guys know, when using this gold ink, which does spread quite a bit, um, I would be prepared for it to kind of block the back of the piece of resin. So if you want like a piece that's more see-through, then I would not recommend using gold. Um, if you do, it's not that big of a deal because you can always sand down the back of the piece. All right, so here I'm just kind of taking the gold leaf and pushing it into the resin so it's submerged. I didn't go too crazy with the gold leaf because I don't like my uh, resin pieces to be too cluttered. This guy here. All right, cool. So now that I got my gold leaf, I'll just keep continue dripping as I see fit. Um, I'm actually gonna use some other colors in these crystals. Maybe we'll try out some pinks. Yeah, and I don't mind these new, um, these alcohol inks that I just got, but I honestly do prefer the pinata brand over these. I feel like these don't uh, spread out as much. They may be a little bit more concentrated and I like when um, they're a little bit looser. All right, so we'll do some pinks and reds in this guy. And we'll layer that with white and gold. And when working with molds like these ones, where it's like, you know, kind of in a regular shape, um, I'll take like a, I'll take toothpicks <laughs> and um, kind of stab down in the center or wherever, and it'll kind of get that ink moving around. You can push it out to the edges. but I would recommend using a new toothpick each time you do that because you don't want to be mixing the different color inks. All right, and then when I have extra epoxy, I'll always grab my, um, I have a bunch of like jewelry pendants and that's a great thing to use your leftovers for because they take up hardly any epoxy and they still look pretty cool. And I just use the same technique that I was using for these with the drip system. All right guys, so now that we have everything poured and everything's all dripped out how we want it, we're gonna wanna let it sit for at minimum 24 hours and make sure that it's on an even surface because if it's like on an angle or something, then your resin's not gonna dry level. So yeah, let it sit, keep it away from dust. If you have dogs, try to keep it away from dog hair as best as you can. <laughs> and um, we'll check back tomorrow and I'll show you guys the results. All right, guys, now it's time for my favorite part. We get to take everything out of the mold. I'm gonna start with the moon here. I'm gonna keep them all upside down until I can flip them over and show you guys. So we'll start with the center one. Ooh, these turned out so good. Ooh, these 
turned out so cool. I already know that I'm obsessed. Here are the two half moons. So they'll go like this. Oh my God, I love these so much. I can't, oops, I can't wait to hang these up. So I'm gonna be attaching rings to the top of these. And then I'm gonna hang them across like a bar or something. Oh, they're so cute. I love the splashes of gold in there. And then here are my last little guys that go on uh, the edges. And then these were the crystals that I took out. These I dripped some different colors and gold into. I like this one a lot. I just did white and gold. Here so you guys can see up close. So they all have that similar pattern. Not the same, but similar. So I definitely had a bit of trial and error when trying to hang these moons, so I'll try to share with you guys all my mistakes so you don't have to be annoyed making them as well. Um, so my original plan was to wrap like hemp around the branches in the spots like above the moons and then hanging like a ring off of that to hang the chains off of. Um, I ended up just hot gluing the chains from the moons onto the back of the branch and it was way faster and way easier and the resin's pretty light so I'm not really worried about them holding like I think they'll stay pretty well and hot glue is just a lot easier compared to like super glue because you don't have to wait a long time for it to dry or anything like that. Um, my next recommendation would to, to get something to hang the moons off of that like kisses the wall that's like flat to the wall all the way across because these branches like um you know, aren't very even they would kind of come off the wall like an inch or two when the branch was hung so that gave space for the moons to kind of like swing around and they weren't sitting flat on the wall so that was a little bit annoying um so yeah definitely get something flat maybe just like a regular like bar or just a straight piece of wood you could find pl plenty of different things that like hobby lobby All right, so this is, uh, I still had the hemp on at this point. This is before I had glued on, but here I'm just putting on all my flowers. So what I did, I just picked out some flowers that would match the moons from Hobby Lobby. I just got like some purple, white, and like a navy blue color because I thought they would kind of, yeah, they match pretty well. So I just got like the bushels of flowers and then cut off the heads and then <laughs> glued them on. And they turned out super cute. I liked how it looked with like decorating the piece right, of wood. Guys, so here you can see the final results. As you can see, like I was saying, this is off the wall a little bit, so those kind of hang twisted. But if this were like flat into the wall, it would look like that. So for my future ones, that's definitely what I'm gonna do. Um, and then for this, the way that I hung it on the top, this is like actually a macrame rope. So what I did is I just threw on some hot glue and then wrapped it around and then tied in a little knot at the top. That worked pretty well. So overall, I'm really happy with this. Um, definitely a couple things I'm gonna change next time around that'll save me a bit of time, but I'm super excited to try this again. So please drop a comment, let me know what you guys thought. And if you tried this out, you know, let me know how it went for you. I'm excited to hear about it.